Hello all, so I am adding one more video to our video interfacing tutorial. Uh, this is regarding interfacing that work with HDMI monitor. I couldn't do it before because I didn't have access to an HDMI monitor, but now I managed to connect my TV to that board and do it. Okay. Now this is specific to that board. If you are using Zybo, uh, this won't work because the particular chip used in Zybo is different one, but a proper tutorial is available for uh, Zybo to do it. Okay, so here also uh, there was a tutorial from Avnet for HDMI interface, but unfortunately uh, that won't work anymore because the specific IP core used in that one is no longer supported by Xilinx and you won't be able to generate a license for that particular IP core. And the alternative suggested that is a very heavy IP and using it is not very straightforward. The software is so complicated that it will be very difficult to use that one. So I have uh, taken part from Avnet tutorial and added my own IPs and uh, now it is working properly. Okay. So this is the detail regarding the HDMI interface. So on the Z board, there is a ADV7511 chip from analog devices, which is acting as the file chip for HDMI. Now this chip, uh, it supports a lot of video standard. You can send data in RGB format, our traditional way, or you can send it in YCBCR. And this is a different standard for uh, representing image data. Instead of sending RGB values, you send the luminance information and the prominence information, uh, basically the intensity information and the color information uh, separately. And this has certain advantages over our traditional RGB. And the straightforward way is uh, each of this color component will be available for each pixel. Okay, If that is the case, we call it 444 format. But here, uh, although the chip supports 24-bit YCBCR on Z board, they have connected only 16-bit, again, most probably to save some space on PCB. So they are following something called 422 mode. That means for every pixel, we will send the luminance information, the brightness information, but the color information is not sent for every pixel. Two consecutive pixels they will have same color information. So this will reduce the number of pins on the board. If you speak about actual video transmission, this will help in reducing the bandwidth. So the IP core, there is an IP core directly available from Avnet uh, for the HDMI transmitter part. So this can be directly interfaced with our AXI video IP. Okay, so that's the main advantage. So I'm starting from our VGA design. So everything is exactly same as what we did for VGA, except in the final stage, the output of this XI stream to video out, uh, we connected to some marks and from there we directly connected to the pins. Okay. Instead of that, now this output, we will have to connect to this IP and uh, he will convert it into the HDMI format for you. So I have kept it in my IP repo so that uh, it will be directly detected here. So I'm just adding that IP. Okay, HDMI. This is that IP. It is written in VHDL, but good thing is Vivado, it supports uh, mixed language. So it doesn't matter whether part of it in VHDL and part of it in Vidlo. Okay, so this is the actual HDL code. The original code, I guess, is directly available from analog devices and uh, I wonder if they have modified it slightly. Anyway, so we take that IP, HDMI, third port HDMI output, and we can directly interface it with this IP. So his output, now I can directly connect. And the clock, everything is exactly the same. We are going to run at 148.5 megahertz for supporting 1080p resolution. So this reset is a active high reset. Okay, so that's one thing we need to remember. So we need a constant and we are never going to reset this IP. So let's make it constant value zero and connect it to reset this is for interfacing the audio to hdmi so as you know hdmi uh, it's a multimedia interface it can send video 
as well as audio but this time we are not planning to send any audio that's why this is permanently connected to one and this one we will make external and we can rename this interface let's call it HTMI underscore IO okay I'm using this particular name because the constraint we have to give the pin constraint and that constraint is also directly available from Amna. and if you follow this in format that would be pretty straightforward okay so that part is done now remember before the input to our video stream IP it is directly coming from our VDMA now that is not going to work because this is a 24-bit RGB format and he doesn't support RGB we need to convert it into YCBCR so first let's do it so that IP is directly available from Xilinx so you can search from RGB to YCRCB color space converter so we take that IP and let's see any configuration yeah so this is good enough we don't have to change anything and you can directly connect it so this output we give here and same clock clock enable we permanently make it one so i guess we already have an ip yeah we have this constant one already so clock enable we can connect here and here is certain we can connect to the X series button. Okay, so that part is also done. Now this output it is in YCBCR, but it is 24 bit. So that we need to convert it into uh, 16 bit. Okay, because YCBCR 422 mode supports 16 bit only. So on every clock we will send one pixel. So first first pixel assume you will send the y and cb information for next pixel you will send y and cr information that's how we are able to save eight bits for every pixel so two consecutive pixels they will have same cb and cr values but each of them they will have different y values the intensity value okay so that's the technique so previously signings they used to have an ip uh, i guess it is Still there, chroma resampler. This IP. Now, unfortunately, this is no longer supported. So, if you try to use this one for generating bitstream, he will give error saying like license is not available and now you can't get license for this IP. So, what they recommend is a video uh, subsystem IP. This one, video processing subsystem. This is a pretty complicated IP and uh, it's not very difficult to convert from 444 to 222 for that we don't have to use this heavyweight ip it takes a lot of resources and the software is super complicated uh, but this ip can do a lot of things actually rgp2 ycbc a conversion as well as subsampling everything he can do together uh, but uh, no need to use that heavy IP so I have written a very simple code this will do our subsampling so here you can see it's following axis stream standard input is 24 bit YCBCR in 444 mode output is 16 bit in YCBCR mode in 422 mode so you can basically see what I am doing on every clock I am just toggling a register okay so if register value is 1 I am concatenating the lower 8 bit with the upper 8 bit if it is 0 I am just taking lower 16 bit so you will see in both cases I am sending the lower 8 bit that is representing the Y part okay so the next two bytes one of them it represents CB the other one it represents CR so in alternate clocks I am sending either CB or CR so in this way we are actually doing the subsampling now you will see I'm not registering anything here because if you add registers here and that will make your design pretty complicated because there can be back pressure coming from the receive part on the master stream then you will have to manage it on the slave side also so that will uh, make design a little bit more complicated so that's why uh, this is simply combination logic 
everything coming from the input is directly passed to the output only the data we are actually placing a multiplexer in between to choose the uh, subsamples okay so that's it so very simple one so that's what i am going to use for chroma subsampling so i'll just drag and drop it here no need to make an ip and all and since we are following a certain naming style s underscore access underscore video he automatically grouped them together into a single interface you can see here so this video out i can directly connect here so 24 and this clock i can connect here this reset i can connect here okay so we have done rgb2 ycbc app for yuv whatever you call and we have subsampled it from 444 to 422 now we can directly connect this output to our xc4 stream video output now to this guy also you need to tell what kind of input you are providing now uh, by default in the previous tutorial it will be rgb this one this you need to change to yuv422 okay so remember to change it like this then only this video in input will become 16. in the previous tutorial if you see if you choose rgb this will be this will be 24 bit okay so that's not what we need we need only 16 bit all these are happening because of housing is connected with the unlock devices chip on the board so we can't do anything about it so you need to choose uh, yuv422 okay so now it is 16 now just take this and connect it okay so that's it so that is the major modification now another thing that we need is again this this particular chip he needs a lot of configuration before he actually transmits hdmi data to your hdmi monitor okay so to this chip also you need to tell what format he should follow because he supports a lot of formats and a lot of uh, other information so to know all those things you can read the data sheet those who are interested now all those controlling information should be sent using an i2c interface okay so we need an additional i2c interface and all this configuration data should be sent through that i2c interface by the processor so we need to add that also so let's come back and let's add an i2c so we can have xc i2c or there is a i2c interface inside the ps and you can connect that also through the mio interface emio interface uh, both are fine okay so we are adding this i2c and we can just do run configuration and can click everything okay he does everything for you so now this will be connected to one of the gp port and this directly became an external interface again those who are interested i2c that is following a bi-directional communication although there are only two signals clock and data so here you can see but here uh, from the ip you will see like there are three signals for clock this one and data okay so this is input this is output and this is a control signal so basically these signals they should be connected to a tri-state buffer and that tri-state buffer should be controlled using this uh, control signal that's how we are actually getting bi-directional now good thing is uh, that buffer instantiation vivado will automatically do for you you don't have to worry that you cannot see here but he will do it on the top file i will show you so first again i'm going to change the name of the interface because the name in my constraint file is different but let me call it z underscore hdmi underscore i2c okay so that's it now let's check okay so these are known warnings they look fine now let me show you one more feature of vivado when we do block design so now you can see how our design looks uh, pretty complicated so if anyone else looks at the design it will be really difficult for them to understand uh, how things are connected together okay so that's where we have the idea of hierarchy so blocks which are logically connected together okay which make the same subsystem you can combine them to make a single hierarchy for example in our design we have 
clearly two subsystems. So I have a subsystem which is doing our image processing. So my Sobel, my width converter, my XCDMA, they are all doing the image processing part. And I have another subsystem which is used for displaying it, right? My VDMA, this one, RGB2Y, timing controller, video out, HDMI, this I2C, they are all part of my video control. So actually I can combine them together logically into a single block and that is called a hierarchy. So doing it is very straightforward. You select by, by clicking control on your keyboard all the logically connected modules. Okay, so all of them. And you can right click and choose create hierarchy and you can give some name. So this is okay, video subsystem, let me call it. Now you can see they are all combined to a single block. Okay, uh, its color will be slightly different. Now if you plus this plus sign, uh, it will expand and you can see all the system inside that. Okay. Now, even if you look at your interconnect, actually interconnect, it's actually a hierarchy. If you expand it, you can see there are multiple blocks inside this axi interconnect. We have couplers, we have crossbar, we have output couplers, and even the couplers, if you open, you can see it is composed of other submodules, axi protocol converter. Okay. So again, that's a good feature of Vivado. So same thing I can do here also. My Sobel with converter XCDMA, they are all together. So I will combine them and create hierarchy and call it image process. Let's regenerate. Now our system looks much simpler. Uh, no need to combine things which are not logically connected. Okay, so these are like standalone uh, modules, no point in combining them. But otherwise, now I have two subsystems here combined into a single hierarchy. So my design is making more sense now. Okay, so that's it. So save your design. And let me just generate the HDL wrapper once again to show you that are you buffers. Okay, so now you, if you go to system wrapper, you'll see like he has instantiated two I.O. buffers, input output buffer, right? So this is the final output set HDMI to CSCL I.O. Okay, so this one and this one are coming from our block and this is that control signal that's also coming from the block. So using this tri-state buffer, input and output, he combined them to input output. And we have two of them for clock and data. So that's why he has instantiated two. So that Vivado will do it for you automatically. Now in the constraint, we already had this VGA constraints. We can remove all of them. And we need to add the constraints for the I2C controller. Basically the interface for I2C, clock and data here, and the HDMI. So for HDMI, we have clock vsync hsync as before there is a data enabled then 16 bit data okay so i have already added it so uh, update your constraint file now we can just go ahead and generate the bit string once hardware design is completed we can go to the software part so the software design also 95 percent it is same as our software for vga the only extra thing is we have this i2c header file and the corresponding i2c source file which is used for initial configuration of the hdmi 5 chip so you can see in the code we have this extra line here where we are initializing the i2c controller and within the i2c controller initialization uh, you can see in this loop we are actually configuring the chip okay so all the configuration information uh, that is pre-stored here and that's how we are doing it now why these exact values are coming uh, you will have to refer to the documentation for the file uh, i have taken it from the amnet code okay so that's why i have kept the 
I have net header so if you are using it uh, remember to keep the header here because it's licensed to Avnet, the I2C part. Now other than that everything looks exactly same only additional difference is uh, previously in this draw image whenever we were sending some pixel information that value was divided by 16 because for VGA there are only 4 bits uh, DAC used on the z okay. So we need to remove the lower 4 bits for every pixel. Now in case of HDMI that's not the case. We are not directly using the RGB values. Instead of that we are converting it into YCBCR format. Okay. So that divide by 16 we need to remove. Otherwise it will be very difficult to see. Okay. So once you have done we can test it. I will share the code. I will share the linker script also because uh, remember to increase this heap size because we are using some dynamic memory allocation. So heap size should be uh, large in this case. Okay. So once it is done, uh, as usual, we can test it. So set the run configuration to program the FPGA and check the application also. So let's program. So now as you can see, you can choose between the original image and the edge detected image and the display is coming on a HDMI monitor. So remember to connect the HDMI cable between the board and the monitor. Thank you.